Chapter 29, taking a look at how particles and waves can actually be one and the same. Kind of strange. So this is known as wave-particle duality, as outlined in section 29.1. And it came from the observation that we could send a beam of electrons at a double slit like we had in Young's experiment. And if we send a beam of electrons towards two openings, what we'd expect is that we would just have an image of the double slit that forms, right? That the electrons would appear perhaps on either side, but instead of just having a simple shadow of the two slits, a fringe pattern occurs, that there's some sort of interference effects that what the screen looks like in terms of where the electrons are is that there are a bunch in the middle and then there are regions where no electrons hit and then more electrons and then no electrons and then more electrons way over here on the side. Like why are electrons going all the way over there? So the conclusion here is that even though electrons are particles, they can exhibit wave-like characteristics where the electrons coming through the double slit can interfere with each other to produce this pattern of bright and dark, bright and dark spots on the screen of electrons hitting or not hitting. Similarly, waves can also uh, exhibit particle-like characteristics. 29.2 looks at black body radiation, and Planck's constant. What this says is that all are continuously radiating electromagnetic waves. So you and I are giving off electromagnetic waves or light. And this is something that you can observe, like if you're wandering around in the dark, you can't see people, but what can you do? You can put on your night vision goggles that are able to observe in the infrared spectrum, which is in the range that we're giving off our radiation, right? For most cool things, the light is at a larger wavelength in the infrared range. But as things get warmer and warmer, like 6,000 Kelvin, that's super hot, notice this is now much more in the visible range in terms of the radiation intensity. And that's why you can see something is red hot, right? Because its temperature is so high that it's giving off light in the visible spectrum where you can actually see it. Uh, you can see the same thing if you look at a flame, right? The different colors of the flame correspond to different temperatures, different amounts of uh, radiation given off. And this electromagnetic energy this light given off is quantized. It's not just any value, but it has to do with that particular wavelength of light or the frequency of light. Because we know frequency and wavelength are inversely proportional, right? If it's the speed of light, then we know that the speed of light C is equal to the wavelength times the frequency. So that's a handy relationship here. But here it's written in terms of the frequency of light, which is just fine. And it says that the energy is equal to something known as Planck's constant times the frequency of light, where n is just an integer. It's a solid number. Planck's constant is something that you're not expected to know. Um, it's given to you in exams, but 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34 joule seconds. So it's very, very tiny. It means we can get tiny amounts of energy, but it turns out we can't get any less than this amount of energy. We're always fixed to that minimum. So that gives some introduction to this, uh, looking at radiation and how even within this smooth spectrum of radiation, the energy is going to be quantized. And we'll see how we can describe the quantized individual energy packets in the next section.